Welcome. Let's take a look at Qt Creator to see how we've updated it for the new declarative UI language. As you can see, we're looking at a new visual editor, but behind the scenes, this is also a plain text QML file, and you can still go and edit it in the edit mode as shown here. But let's go back to the visual editor and give you a tour. The first panel is the navigator. It shows all the elements in the scene. You can use it to select things. You can also choose to hide items, which helps you focus on various parts of your application. Here I am hiding the circle. The next panel is the library. This shows all the QML elements and any custom QML elements you have. To add them to the scene, just drag and drop them straight in. The next panel are the visual properties. Here we're using it to change the properties of this rectangle to be cute green. Now moving around with the properties is quite inefficient, so what we're going to do here is just drag and drop the item. As you can see we have snapping, we can also resize, and then using the keyboard cursor keys you can nudge items around, and if you hold down shift at the same time it will nudge in increments of 10. Let's just delete that item now. Here's the resources pane, it will show you any images that are in your project. Again just drag and drop them into the scene to add them. Let's add four items in total to make a first view of our application. The final pane is the states pane that shows all the states you have. Let's add another one to the application. And now let's customize this state. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the balls that are at the top to the bottom and the balls that are at the bottom to the top. I'm just using multiple selection and snapping to make that as easy as possible. Let's have a look at the text mode. As you can see, all the items we've just added are there. Let's have a look down at the bottom. Here you can see I already added a transition before this video was recorded. Let's test the application with the built-in QML viewer. I just did that with Control or Command R. The application is running, but we need to make it interactive. So let's go and add a mouse region so we can click on the application and have something happen. So I'm just dropping it in. I'm then using our anchor mode to tell that to fill the screen. Let's go back to the text mode, scroll back down to the state, and we're going to use data binding to add a when statement. So I just need to say that when this mouse region is pressed, we can go into this second state. And once that's done, let's test the application to see if it's working. So control R again, and here we go, I'm going to click and you can even see the effect of the nice easing curve I'm using to have a nice bounce effect. Okay, let's close that. Okay, let's show you some of the features of text mode. So we have auto completion. If you hit control space, you can see possible items. This is something we're working on improving right now. We also have completion of braces and brackets. We also have a really nice feature. If you go into the preferences, go to text editor display and turn on highlight blocks, what you can see now is we use shades of grey to show you how nested you are in your QML application. We also have context sensitive help, so just hover the mouse over an element, you'll see the F1 pops up, press the F1 key and now you have all the help you need for that specific QML element. Let's close that. Here we are in the projects pane. As you can see, we've added QML viewer support. There's also a pretty nice feature here where you can select which QML file is going to be run. If you want your component to be run within the context of another application or another component, then you can choose to have that run here when you hit Control R rather than just the current open file. Finally, we have the QML inspector. This is for debugging your application. So here we are running the same app but now we can actually see the values at runtime of various elements. This is really helpful for understanding what's going on at runtime and solving any issues you have. That concludes the tour and please keep an eye on labs for future updates to how we're improving Qt Creator. Thanks very much.